Week eight of the high school football season has arrived. Dave Bear here with Rick Cantu and Danny Davis. And as we do every Thursday, it's time to look ahead to the biggest games of the weekend. We highlight four games every week. And today we're going a full slate on Friday. And we'll start off with Westwood at Stony Point. These two teams fighting for playoff contention in a, in a district that's full of teams that are right there. They're, they're these two teams fighting to try to get at least one of those playoff spots. Danny, what do you look for in this game? Yeah, the district, I think Hendrickson, we're all, we know they're in. But right. uh, then you got the Round Rocks, you got the Westwood, Stony Point, Cedar Ridge, three playoff spots for those four teams. I'm gonna go with Westwood in this game. Uh, Bear Finnemore leads the area in passing yards. Josh Bishop leads the area in receptions. So their offense is fine. It, this one's gonna be on the defense, so they're giving up almost uh, almost 37 points a game in district play, so the defense needs to step up against a pretty talented Stony Point team. I say Westwood gets it done, but that defense needs to step up this week. What do you think, Rick? I think that uh, Bear Fenimore has got too much on his shoulders. He's, he's actually accounted for 87% of Westwood's offense wow. either running or passing. That of the day. By contrast, Stony Point is almost a 50-50 run pass. Mm -hmm. They've got 16 rushing touchdowns, 17 passing touchdowns. Aiden Barrera, he's one of those under the radar kind of quarterbacks. He's probably still under the radar. Mm -hmm. But he's actually having a good season. 10 touchdown passes, only two interceptions. He leads the team in rushing, obviously in passing too. I see Stony Point in a close game. The next game is a game of two teams fighting to be at the top of their district up at Liberty Hill t tomorrow night, rather. Burn it and Liberty Hill. Rick will stay with you. What do you look for in that one? That's going to be a good game. Mm -hmm. And I've got Liberty Hill because their, their running game is just so awesome this year. They've got five guys who have rushed for at least 300 yards. 97%, I did some math, 97% of their offense is on the ground. Alrighty, Danny? Yeah, Derek Kaiser is probably the best quarterback we don't talk much about. Over 2,000 yards passing, 22 touchdowns. Um, the offense isn't the problem, Burn it. Kind of, kind of a Westwood situation. Um, 36.4 points per game on offense. They have two five-point losses. One they can put on their defense. You were at that Marble Falls game. Mm -hmm. uh, the Brown one game they lost a couple weeks, weeks ago. They gave up two kickoff returns for a touchdown, including a 107-yard one in the last couple seconds. So um, the offense is getting it done. If the defense can step up a little bit and maybe the predictability at Liberty Hill might help out a little bit there, but I'm going to go with Burnett in this one. And I think that District 8-3A is going to be really fun to see down the stretch with Burnett, Liberty Hill, and Brownwood all battling for that title. For sure. Our third game uh, is between two undefeated teams that people probably haven't really seen this season, Hyde Park and Regents. I'm taking the video camera out there to get some taps action tomorrow night. Uh, Danny, we'll stay with you. What do you look for with these two undefeated teams? Um, Regents, they have some really nice offensive numbers, but I'm going to go with defense in this one. Hyde Park, they've allowed six offensive touchdowns this entire season. Their defense has actually scored three offensive touchdowns. That's a pretty nice ratio that a short coach Campbell out there likes a lot. Um, Trace Brinkman, he's their kicker. I, I'm a big fan of kickers whenever they can do uh, something really cool. And last week in the fourth quarter, he had three field goals and 18 to 15 win over San Antonio Christian. Uh, you don't see that a lot in the high school level. Someone with that uh, much poise being able to you know, kick that many field goals in pressure situations. So right. defense and special teams, I think uh, Hyde Park gets it done. All right, and Rick? Well, Regents is 5-0 and against Hyde Park in their history. Uh, talk about defense. Regents is very good on defense, too. They're only allowing eight points a game. Think about Hyde Park, they've scored 25 offensive touchdowns this year. All of them on the ground. So, I'm not giving the game plan away, but they are going to run the football. It's going to be a heck of a football game, 7-0, and, and oh, both teams. That's their own initial at this point of year. I see a coin flip, but my coin says Regents is going to make it 6-0. Looking forward to going out there and seeing that one tomorrow night. Our last game, Vandergriff at Cedar Park. Cedar Park pretty much uh, wraps up the district with a win. Rick, will stay with you. Do they get the win and the district title, or are we seeing Vandergriff get the W tomorrow night? I like Vandergriff a lot, but I like the pedigree that, that Cedar Park has built. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate Grimm and Jamie Hudson, the two opposing quarterbacks in this case. I did my math again. Both. <laughs> are responsible for 57% of their team's offense. Wow. Rushing, passing. Both of them lead their team in passing, of course, and both lead in, in rushing, too. Uh, I just I just like Cedar Park. It's hard to go against them. Yeah, I knew I should not have given him a calculator <laughs> for Christmas last year. Um, I got some simple math for you. Last, last week, uh, Cedar Park beat Rouse 
Um, seven of those points, Rouse got an interception return, so that leaves only seven points that their defense gave up, and that's a pretty good Rouse team. So I know last week when we were talking about the games, we were kind of a little skeptical about Cedar Park's defense, and they hadn't been having the numbers that we had been used to. And uh, one of their guys, Sean Angle, a defensive back, told me that during their bye week, they weren't even allowed to use their Black Rain nickname. They just quit calling themselves that. They wanted to earn it back. I think they did against Rouse. And, you know, this Vandergriff team has some talent with Max Reagan, Luke Peterman, two kids going to Army, um, but I think Cedar Park gets a win in the end, and I think they're well on their way to another district title. District races coming into focus, going to be interesting uh, Saturday morning when we look around and see where all the dust settled after week eight with a, a lot of good matchups around the area. Danny and Rick will have coverage from all over as usual. We'll see you.